Hey everyone, uh, what we're going to do today is a float and fly jig and I promise you it's the last float and fly we're going to do because uh, it's the last one in my patterns that I have. I have three and this one um, and the reason why I have this one separated is this is a larger one. This is a 1 8 ounce with a number one owner 5318 hook in it. Uh, I don't use this size very often. It's mostly the one sixteenth with a size two, but this is one that I call uh, my stained water special. Uh, it's pearl and chartreuse. I don't know how it's coming uh, out in the camera. I don't know if you can tell what the colors are. A white's a problem. As you can see, it looks like it's dark around me. It's a, a filter I'm using to try to let you see the color because it's something I'm trying anyway. Uh, every time I do something pearl or white, uh, you can't really tell what it is because it's just uh, the color just get reflects the light so bad. So I'm trying something different. Let me know what do you think of it uh, in the comment section. But again, like I said, a one eight ounce minnow head. Uh, we cut the barb off. It's got a size one owner fifty three eighteen. And we're going to take some super glue brush on and just put a little bit on the collar to get started here. And we're going to use white uh, 140 denier flat wax nylon thread and get our base started. There's not a lot to these floating flies, but they are they are kind of neat and they do work. And believe it or not. Um, they work in the summertime, although in the summer, I tend to use a larger jig. I use um, what I call, uh, it's it's a homemade version of a Spro Fat Fly that I like using. I use an Ultra Minnow Head, 8 downs, one aught hook, a um, little bit bigger, a uh, little bigger profile. I, I tend to like that. Uh, it could do real, uh, it does really well. When there's fry in the middle of the summer and they're not biting really well, it's a good way to catch them. It's boring, but it works. So anyway, we got our base started, and we're going to take some white extra select craft fur. Real easy. Just like the other ones, you're going to want it about an inch or so behind the bend of the hook. And... Mark it, and we will trim it off. And we'll work it around it. It's about halfway. Looks pretty decent. And we'll lash it down pretty tight so that way it doesn't move on us. And we're going to flip this up and we're going to add our second color, which is chartreuse craft fur. Line it up with what we got tied in and we'll trim it. This is the same way. You're going to fish this. Like, like for me with the float and fly, um, I use six pound test. I'm not a purist. I know a lot of them guys use four pound. Um, for me, it's six pound. With this one, uh, it's the same way because I got a, a really sharp hook in there. A size one hook is really nice. It, six pound works. Uh, so that's, you're not. Uh, worried about getting a good hook set or anything. When I use the like the Spro deal, the the fat fly type of jig, that's when I'm bumping it up to like eight pound. But for this six pound line is plenty, even this eight ounce with the size one hook. We get our collar tied in here now. 
and we're just about done. Got two more elements to add to this. Next is our flash. I'm going to take three strands of polar flash. And I want these in a little past the, the hair. Take our three strands, tie it in on one side. Tie it in on the other. Trim it off. And then we're going to add three strands of chartreuse polar flash. I like to do that on the top end. The same way we're going to make sure we're a little past the end of the our craft fur. Put a wrap or two in, fold it over, trim it off. Whoop. Help if I caught it with the scissors, wouldn't it? It happens. Now I'm going to build this collar up just a little bit before we tie in our mallard flank. And for the mallard flank, we're just using the natural color. This is just natural board mallard flank. I, I love the look of this stuff. And I love what it does to the jig itself, the, the overall profile. You want to get this centered as well as you can. I don't want to tighten it down till I get the other one in. And get our second one. Because you want them to be as even as possible. Now we're just going to tie over that stem to make sure we're nice and secure. And we're just about done. Time for the whip finish. Two, three, four, five, six. A cinch. One, two, four, five. And you can see, I could cinch this down pretty good, and this 140 is, is pretty strong. But it's a little thinner, so you can add a little more layers to it. Um than the 210, but it's still plenty strong. So we're gonna take our head cement here. And we're good to go, I'll show you what we have. Get our clamp. Open our vise, and there you have it. That is your stain water special, chartreuse pearl. And what's real neat is you can see that chartreuse, how it comes through the natural mallard flank, so you, you sort of get that chartreuse tint on the feather. I don't know if you could see that on camera, but... Um, I think it's a pretty neat effect. Anyway, give it a shot. Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching.